Today we have the Aurora Awards Administrator Cliff Samuels <laughs> that got caught on camera. <laughs> Welcome, Cliff. Good morning. Thank you, Rhea. Good morning. So let's start with the beginning. What is the Aurora Awards? The Auroras are one of Canada's longest science fiction fantasy awards. We've been around for, well, since 1980. Started in Halifax. It is a fan based award. And that means anybody in Canada can become a member of the society for a very minor fee and they can participate in the awards, whether it's nominating works or it's voting for the awards. And you get a ton of free books with our voters package, but we try to cover all Canadians. We're trying to honor the wonderful works that Canadian writers are doing. Okay, so let's start with my question then, before we go on to the beginning. What constitutes a Canadian? So if you're born in Canada, but have never lived in Canada, are you a Canadian? Yeah, if you have a Canadian citizenship, you're defined as a Canadian. So we've got authors who get on the eligibility list who live all over the world. What about uh, um, landed in immigrant status as opposed to Canadian? Yes. Status? If if you've been in Canada and gotten your landed in immigrant status, then you are defined as a Canadian because you are, I guess the best way of describing it is you have lived in Canada, you have the feel of a Canadian, you've been here probably three or more years, and you kind of have an idea of what it means to be a Canadian. So then my next question is, Okay, so you're not born in Canada, but you've lived in Canada, as you said, three or more years, but you don't have that citizenship or immigration status. You have to have, I mean, you, you <laughs> most of the people we've talked with, we do ask to make sure that they are landed immigrants and they've gone through that process. What about but, if they're married to a Canadian? No, you still have to be, uh, you, to be you know, if you're, if you're living outside of the country, we have works that You've done a novel, one of your authors is Canadian, but the other one's an American mm -hmm. and or a Brit or um, somebody from New Zealand. Yeah. Non-Canadian. You don't get to win an Aurora, but you get one of our neat, cool uh, nominee pins. Um, but, but the Canadian half author does get the to The Canadian win. half would win the award. And you're allowed to do whatever you want. If you want to give your American half your trophy, if you win, you're more than welcome to do that. And we had an instance a couple of years ago where that happened and the Canadian said, I can always win another Aurora Award. And... I think for, for her, the lady who was the American, this was a really sweet gesture. Okay. All right, so let's start with the eligibility process. So I've written a book, a poem, a song, or whatever. How do I submit it so it becomes eligible to be nominated? Well, you can either send us emails through our, our info ad or to the awards um, through our contact page. But what we usually do is we have people can register as a member of the society, and then you can go in in the early part of the year. We usually start this off early in January, and it usually runs for about two months. And anyone can nominate or put works into that eligibility list. So if your publisher wants to do it, they can get a non-voting account. That's what account. we do it. Yeah, we, yes. we enter ours. And we have fans who will put stuff in, things that they say, I really love that book or that poem. And they will put the stories in, the poems in, the um, anthologies into the list. And then I have a team of eight people who go through that list and work as hard as we can to figure out if they really are eligible. And, you know, we make mistakes. Every once in a while, something gets through that, look that it should have been in the list, but shouldn't have been. But we also count on our members to go through the list and going, hey, that's missing. Could you get that on the list? And we've done that. We've bent over backwards to make sure that as much of Canadian works get on our list. And we get, some categories get hundreds of 
works added to them. Short stories and poems. It's amazing how much written work is being done by Canadians. So let's then lead to the next question. What are the categories? What can people be um, entered into? Okay, the awards are split on two sides. There is what we call the professional categories and then the fan categories. The fan categories are basically works that are done by fans who are either not professionals or who are just doing it for fun. So we have in our professional category, we start off with the huge one, novels. Yeah. Um, then we have young adult novels. Um, the difference between those is that the young adults are more geared to a younger demographic. They don't have to be as long a work. So a novel is something that's at least 40,000 words or more, where the young adult is 30,000 and more. Yeah, and we have novels nominated in both those categories ourselves. That's correct. Um, both um, Hollow and then Connecticut Yankee. That's right. And they're, they, We'll get to how they get onto the yeah. ballot in a moment. Yeah. But then we've added a two, we split a category. Last year we had short fiction and that had way too many words. So what <laughs> we've done is we've created a novelette and novella category. So that's any written work that's less than that 40,000, but greater than 7,500 words. And then we have short stories. And those are, of course, the works that are um 7500 words or less yeah like all cats go to Valhalla that's right so you'll get a short story within an anthology or online um various places magazines then we have our graphic novel comic category so these ones are basically illustrated works or comic books or web comics just a huge range now. And I have a question regarding that one because I personally know of a graphic novel in the works. It's written by an American, but the artists are Canadian. <laughs> and of course, where, where it, it, it all depends on where the author wants their, their, their work to be. Some things are minorly illustrated. They've just got a few illustrations where you've got ones that are actually no, this is a graphic novel. This is okay. Well, we can <laughs> we can get into that when we get down to it. Because I then know you have, have an artist poem. category too, so it's we do. So we have poem and song, which yes. is poem, the song lyrics, and these can be published or if they're a, a music that has been performed, um, it's the lyrics from that song that can be uh, nominated, and then we have. Um, related work category, which is basically it's everything that doesn't fall literary wise in the previous ones. So you get magazines, you get um, anthologies. That's correct. And uh, Swashbuckling Cats is on the list this year. We have um, things like podcasts that are professional podcasts. And that's where I was nominated because I'm, I'm a nominee in that category for World Fantasy La, uh, when it came out several years ago. Yes. And uh, there's there's a lot of podcasts that are just done for the fun of it. Mm -hmm. And those are going to be in the fan category. But the ones that are for publishing houses that are you're being paid to do the work, those would go into the professional category. Uh, right. You're right. Then we have the visual presentation category, which is probably the, it's the only non-writing or book related one, but this one deals with TV shows, movies, um, and it's based on the either showrunner or mm -hmm. the director. So if you have somebody a number of years ago, we had Blade Runner um, that Denny Villeneuve had done. He is a Canadian director out of Quebec, and uh, he was nominated for his work. We've got a, a work this year, the Umbrella Academy, yeah, which Steve Blackman might be living in the States, but he's Canadian. And of course the show is filmed in Canada. Um, but that it, it doesn't matter if the show is filmed here, 
It's the person who's managing it, who has the vision of where that show is going. The next category and the last one in our professional categories is artist. Yes. And this is an unusual one that it's not for a specific work of art. It's for the body of artwork that the artist has done during the year. So we've got somebody like uh, Swati Chavda who has done art, maps, book covers. So she's done a whole range of things, but not just the cover to a single book or um, theories of, let's say, we've gotten cases where the uh, artist is a house artist and they do all of the art for a specific mm -hmm. publisher. So if the cover from, let's say, one of the Taiki books was done by a Canadian. Last then year that, it was, um, Jim, Jim Beveridge was nominated. That is year. correct. And Jim wasn't, isn't on the list. He's been yeah. on the list a number of times because yes. you've had some wonderful covers. Then we have our fan categories and the, those this year, we've only got two. Normally we have three, we have fan organizational, but the problem is this year with COVID, everything's yeah. virtual. Yes. And a lot of conferences in 2020 didn't happen at all. And that has always been a problem where limited number of conventions are, would have been eligible. So what we did was we moved all of those works that would have been eligible into our related category, which is always our catch-all category. But we have fan writing and publications where these are even professional writers, but if they're doing articles on books or things that are not literary in a sense of stories, for that magazine, then mm -hmm. they can be eligible. Like this year, um, Rob Sawyer is on it for doing articles for a amateur magazine. And then the last one, as I said, is our sort of our catch-all, and that's our fan-related category. And it has this year um, some reading series. It's got con some conventions. It even has the 2020 Aurora Award a ceremony which was done virtually last year. And I think for a lot of people, that was one of the best attended Aurora Awards we've ever had. So that was really exciting. And they did such a great job. Yeah, and now that you mention it, I think that's where I got nominated in that category. Maybe, I don't remember, that was a few years ago. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't have my list. There's, it's there's not been hundreds and hundreds. The awards have been going on since 1980. I know. So. It's not important. It's more self-aggrandizing. You know, it's like, um, okay, so all these things, when they're put on the nominee list online, when you're putting something on the nominee list online, do you have to be a member? Do you have to pay that nominal fee to put something on the list online? At the moment, you do. Um, but you can send us requests and we will put it on for you. There's no, there's no charge to go putting it on. You don't have to pay us to do that. Um, we always appreciate when people become members and participate in the eligibility list. But we're hoping um, at some point to be able to actually move that list out of the pay cycle where you can just go in, um, but you'd have to have an account because we do not, we're trying to keep out the spammers. Yes. So that's the main reason for making sure that you have an account with the society. Okay, so you have your list of all these works that are eligible in the various categories. What next? How do you get them, get them to be the, in the nomination process? Well, what we do is when somebody submits something, it is sort of done as we have to look at it. Then what we do is we go and verify as much as all of the things that we've seen. And that is what shows up on what our, our, our nomination form. So you get to take up to five items from a drop series of drop down lists. So you don't have to worry about spelling it or anything like that. If you see your favorite book in the drop-down list, you select it and you can select up to five of those. And so that goes through all the categories. You don't have to do all five. You don't have to select all the categories. We always say, nominate what you know. So it's a, uh, a weighted average then? 
Well, what we do is what we do take is the top five nominees. And if there's a tie for fifth place, then they get, that's why we might have more than five. So if we've got a um, hundred works that get people's nomination, but the top five have, you know, a hundred or 75, we work our way down till we get the top five of those. And that's who goes on to our ballot. But and how do you, how do you determine that? So you've got, so I can list my five books. I want this book to be number one, this book to be number two. Oh, there's no ranking. Three. Oh, it's, there isn't. There used done, to be. It's an unranked thing. You just say, I like these oh, okay. five books. So they're all equal weight. Okay. It's not like when we when you vote for something, we'll get to that. That yeah. is a ranking system. Oh, so this okay, is just, I'm getting ahead of myself. Right? Yeah. So the nominations form is a, an unweighted yeah. item. It's just top. If you get yeah. more votes than anyone else, then that's you correct. Get it. And it, okay. it it's uh, and that's why we take the top five because that way we get a we hope a fairly broad selection. And there have been cases where we've had, you know, a tie for that last place with three people. So sometimes you get lots of extra stuff on the ballot. Okay, so that's again online, and is. And then after that, you have your top nominees, you contact your nominees. I do, and that, that usually takes me, this year it took me uh, a week to get a hold of all of my nominees, um, get verification back. And uh, then la this week I've been going through, or the, me, the, the last week I went through making sure that my nominees saw the ballot, they confirmed everything looked good. Um, I always like to get my nominees to work a little bit for me. Um, they go through my lists, confirm that yes, it's right. They can see who else is on the list. They can see how somebody else worded their stuff. And they can say, oh, I need, could you adjust this? Or could you ad add extra people? We had that in the sense of Murdoch mystery. Um, they were very thrilled about being nominated again this year, and they wanted three more people to be listed <laughs> as creators on the show. And they have more people all the time having more input in the stories and things. So they wanted them to be recognized. And that's a true sign that they are interested in the awards. So now that we've got everything done, we've got our ballot set up, we let our nominees know first that we're up off to the races. And, and ask then, them for copies of the work. Yeah, well, that, that's true. One of the things that we do ask for is, there's a whole list of things that I ask each nominee for, is bios, because we do a page mm -hmm. on our website which lists all the nominees, their bios, any links, and a picture. So you get to kind of see who these nominees are. Then we also ask them to send us, if they are willing, they or their publisher, um, copies of their work, whether it be in um, EPUB or Mobi or PDF, can have watermarks so you know you people can't um, pass it around and try to sell it. And that is, goes into our voters package. And our voters package usually contains either a full or an excerpt from pretty well every literary bit of work that we get. The short fiction, we usually get the entire work, but sometimes in a novel, we'll just get part of the novel to give you an idea if you like it. And then you can go out and get the e-version yourself or you can um, you know, buy the physical book. Yeah. Um, and if you really love it, we always encourage our members to say, if you love it, you know, pay for it. And uh, that money helps support the authors. But I think a lot of what the Auroras do is give a lot of visibility to new authors and older authors who produce some cool works. But we also ask, and this is something new, is how do they s pronounce their name? <laughs> because there's too many times at the awards ceremony, I for one have misspelled and mispronounced names so easily. I love it when somebody says, you know, yes, that is how you pronounce my name. But also, 
we also make sure we like to know their, their gender pronoun because I've gotten stuff from somebody who I thought was a gentleman and it was a lady. And I've also had cases where, you know, somebody goes by they. Mm -hmm. So we try to accommodate everybody and make them feel as comfortable and being part of the awards as we can. Well, as someone with an unpronounceable name. <laughs> well, being that I know you, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, our host last year and the gentleman who, uh, who ran the awards, um, yes, most people mispronounce his name. And he has done a video online on how to pronounce <laughs> his name. And it's most entertaining. But as an MC for the awards, he was so appreciative of people giving him spelling correctly and phonetically of their names. <laughs> but now that we've done that, we, we create a voters package that members of the society, paid members, can download onto their computers and then import into whatever e-reader that they like. So if it's a PDF or it's an EPUB or a Mobi file, or I mean, in some cases we've gotten Word documents, so you can read them either on your computer or a handheld, which really helps a lot of people get access to a lot of these works because I know for me, you can get good information on a novel, mm -hmm. but try to find a short story yes. these days. I mean, it is so difficult. And those are the ones I find are the most uh, enjoyable to read because I get a quick glimpse into a new author. Okay. So you've got these, you've got your list of nominees. You've got your voter package that paid members. How much is a membership, by the way? $10. Yeah. I mean, it's cheaper than a paperback book. I know. But and that's it's for come. your annual membership. And you will most likely get most of the novels, young adult novels, novellas, which these days a novella is like a small novel. Yep. And the short fiction, um, a lot of times we get either links or the graphic novels, the anthologies. So you get a lot of great stuff. So for 10 bucks, it's a really good deal. So now you have your list of nominees. Your members have the books so that they can read them ahead of time. Next is the voting process. That's right. And in the old days, in the old days when I was a young thing and didn't have gray hair, <laughs> we used to start voting off right away. We would get you in there and we don't do that anymore. We want people to have read the works, get an understanding of what they're gonna vote for. So what we do is we give them the summer to read. And then later in July, near the end of July actually, we will open up voting for five weeks. We usually find that's more than enough time to get people to, to, to vote. And at the beginning of September, we'll close the voting off. And at that point, I will take those votes and tabulate them. Now, the voting is different than nominating. Yeah, we this use is what the they rank. call the instant runoff process or a ranked voting system. Some people used to call it the Australian ballot system, <laughs> but that actually is not the right name for it. It actually is, uh, it was never invented in Australia. What the awards do is when you are voting, you get to pick your first choice. Then you pick your second. So what happens, it means is if your first choice gets taken off the list because it's the lowest that people have been nominating, your second choice goes into the works. So you get to fit your first, your second, your third, your fourth, all the way down to the end. Now, if you dislike everything in a category, you don't think anything should be nominated, which is pretty hard in these days. And this on our list, I think you'd be finding it hard pressed to say that, but we do give you that option of saying none of the above. So you could pick your first choice and your second choice and then say, I don't think the others are qualified or somebody shouldn't have been on the ballot, but we only say, use that with a really, really 
a huge grain of salt because that that I that that none of the above should only be used as a last resort and not used if you don't know the category. So if you don't know yeah. anything on a category, you don't just leave vote. it blank. Yeah, that's just what I, I tend. To, that's what I tend to do when I vote is. Yeah. And even the novels, I don't get to all of them. So I'll vote, you know, one, two, three and leave four and five blank. And that happens to me a lot. There's categories that I don't really know. Yeah. And, uh, but that's what the voters package is there for to help you get that knowledge. So let's say you can read all the poems mm -hmm. and if you get out and say, you know what, I didn't really like anything. They're okay, but I'm not gonna vote for anything. That's fine. You don't have to. Um, but when I take those votes, what I do is I determine how many first places have happened. And if a work in that category gets over 50%, then they've automatically won. Mm -hmm. But if they haven't, I take the lowest one out. And anybody who had voted for that one as their second choice gets bumped up to their, in a sense, to their new first place. And then we keep working it down until we sometimes are left with two works and they determine who gets it. And every once in a while, it's a tie. And if the, I don't, if, if at the end, everybody gets the same number, I don't look at, well, on the previous round, you did better than this. No, you get tied and both people will get a trophy. So speaking of trophies, as you said, Murdoch Mystery has what, five, five people under their list or something like that? They will only get one trophy per for the, for the TV show. Okay, that's what I was gonna ask. Is if, 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 a, if a novel, on the other hand, had two authors co-writing it, we have given both authors the trophy. But for, for the amateur, for the fan categories, um, we only give one trophy per item because a lot of those cases, it's a group effort. Yeah. Um, some of those, um, uh, James Nichol, uh, has a online blog where he has young people reading science fiction. And he's got quite the cast of people <laughs> who are working there. And this is really for that team. When Calgary's When Words Collide has won the trophy, well, yeah. a convention yeah. is never done by one person. You as an ex-worker on that that committee know that no one person can really create a lot of these fan events so that trophy is for the conference versus for the person okay and then all right so you've got your your winners so discuss live versus virtual because last year you had to do it virtual and this year you'll probably do it virtual it is going to be done virtual the um, host convention hasn't told us the process yet that they're going to be doing but yes they will be doing a in a, a virtual event live events are a lot of fun but you don't always get everybody able to participate where a uh, virtual one you can bring people into the in, the events. So, the, I guess more what I'm asking is at a live event, you do the whole envelope opening ceremony. This is the nominees, and the winner is, and you open the envelope. Oh, we still do the M envelopes and open them up and the same. The oh, same so you thing. send them, so you send envelopes to your to your presenters? Well, last or do they year, already know? La, no, last year, Mark Leslie. Um, uh, Lefebvre was our MC, mm -hmm. and uh, he was he was basically presenting to everybody. And I sent him a box with the em sealed envelopes. Okay. The day of the event, he actually opened up his box and took everything out. But uh, he had no he was as surprised by the winners as everybody else. And uh, we'll see how that goes for this year. I don't know how the uh, host CanCon 
will be like wanting to do it. Um, they've decided that they are actually not going to be doing a conference that weekend, but they will be hosting the actual awards. Yeah, because I know on the live events, you have your MC, but you have individual presenters. Think of it like any TV award or the or the Oscars or something. You have your MC and then presenters come out and go nominees, here's the envelope. So but you don't have individual presenters on the virtual Last event. year we didn't. I don't know what Ottawa has plans for it. Um, if they're going to have, they may, be, you know, if all the presenters are in Ottawa, what they might do is take each envelope and hand it to each presenter prior to the event. Okay. And then they could open up the envelope on air when they're doing their presentation. What happens if they're not all in Ottawa? Well, with a virtual one, you can have your I know. spread across. And that is going to be a challenge. Um, <laughs> they may have to get an email that they'll open up and they will know. Yeah. But uh, those are things that, uh, you know, a lot of it we're new at. And uh, they may have the list and they may have one person open and mm -hmm. announce the winner. But those people will be presenting they will read the list of nominees and then somebody elsewhere will just pull it out of the envelope just so people know our envelopes are very cool they're shiny silver the nominees are printed directly onto the envelope and then it's the winner is on a sheet cardboard sheet slid inside and it's sealed with a hot wax Seal, with yeah. the Aurora A on the outside. So, and it's got a little tab to help open it. The first time we did it, we didn't have a tab. And for somebody <laughs> trying to open that, it was challenging. So now we have, we evolve every year. My first year doing that is when I took over the awards on my own. I was working with another member doing the awards with him for a number of years. And then I took it on as a project of my own. And uh, that's when the shiny silver envelopes appeared. <laughs> and that was in 2011. And I remember the year that we were doing that was in person in Toronto. And author Robert J. Sawyer was handed, he, I think he had won or he was presenting. And he looked at the envelope and he says, my God, where it's like we're at the Academy Awards. <laughs> Except we have the real answers in the envelope and not it made, we didn't hand them the incorrect one. <laughs> well, that doesn't happen all the time. Anymore. No. And I'm now, after something like that happened on the Academy Awards, I am very paranoid to make <laughs> sure that the right thing was in the right envelope. So I should have asked you this ahead of time. We don't have a picture of the Aurora Award itself, do we? Oh, I do actually. Oh, hang on one second. Award? I should have prepped you ahead of time and I didn't even Oh no, no, I have it right here. The Aurora has actually changed over years. Yes. Um, you can see on our logo and behind me, um, the Auroras were at one point for like 25 years, a gorgeous, shiny, multi-piece metal um, trophy with a wooden base that you literally had to put together. <laughs> and we called it the cheese grater because if you put it in your luggage, everything in your luggage would be shredded. But the gentleman who made them retired and we moved to another shiny glass one that was beautiful. But unfortunately last year, it turns out that they discontinued it. So this is the new design for the Aurora Award. Oop, I'll get it that way so it doesn't <laughs> reflect. Um, and then what will happen is they will have their name engraved onto the front of the plaque. It used to be that we'd have yeah. a plate put on. Now that this is actually a black mm -hmm. coating, it will just get engraved off. And then their name will get put onto that. So, yeah, it's, it's a very cool design. There's a metal piece holding it onto a stone bottom and this is originally clear glass so the same design as you can see from our yes. um, pin design has been continued on 
with this. It's actually a design I came up with. And everybody who wins one, it comes in a beautiful box. Oh yeah. So it's all comes in and you get it home. You can either protect it in the box or you can put it up on your bookshelf. Yeah. I and if you get a couple, it's like bookends. So tell us some stories. Like what is the most amusing thing that has happened during an aurora ceremony? During your mind. Night. Actually, I'm going to talk a, a little bit about some of my calls I've had to nominees when they get okay. the word. that Because many a time I'll call them up and I'll say, hi, it's so-and-so. And you hear a silence in the other end because <laughs> they know who I am. <laughs> and they kind of have an idea of why I'm calling. And it's the squeals of delight um, which is probably one of the biggest perks for me doing the awards because people are really happy when I'm calling them. And during COVID, you've got to make people happy. <laughs> but a number of years ago, I called a fellow, an author in um, Ontario, and I told him he was on the ballot and he was jumping for joy. And he says, oh, finally. And I said, what do you mean? He said, I don't really care if I win or lose. I just wanted that nominee pin. <laughs> and he said everybody in his group had a pin. These are the pins themselves. Yeah, uh, I have one. Yeah. So it has the word Aurora up on its side. And everybody in his writer's group had a pin. He didn't have a pin. <laughs> and for him now, this was his sign that he was part of the gang. So he was really happy. A number of years ago at, um, actually was in, I think it was in Toronto um, at the awards ceremony. Um, I had authors, of course, they come up to you and I know who won mm -hmm. and they're kind of looking for clues. <laughs> they're kind of giving you the look and they want you to you know, give them a little wink or whatever to sort of say, yeah, you won, you did. But Tanya Huff kept kind of, you know, subtly, and she kept looking for clues. And she said, when she won, she looked at me and said, I actually believed I had lost because you wouldn't give me <laughs> a smile at all. She said, I had the best poker face she'd ever seen at an award ceremony. <laughs> That's good. But we have shipped awards. I mean, when we've gotten um, people who have won, I mean, we get pictures back and they're just the, the biggest smiles on their face. I mean, the awards can help an author with, if they're just like a short story writer and they get an Aurora to become a, a, a more published writer because they have an award, mm -hmm. even just getting nominated. Um, one of our uh, artists, she's a young lady. Um, her mother used, got her to do a piece of art for the cover for her anthology and beautiful piece of art. And for her, this is yeah. more than just getting a, a the chance to be nominated is something that she can put in a resume and say she's been nominated for an award. And the awards for a lot of people are a very significant award. But you're not gonna tell us any bad sides. Oh, we've had. Not necessarily bad, maybe bad's the wrong word because I don't wanna hear bad stories, but, you know, funny stories or. Well, I remember being in, in, it was actually, it was in, um, I'm just trying to remember if it was Ottawa or Toronto. And it was the first year I was trying to, it was Toronto. And I wanted to seal the envelopes. And I was worried that I would take the envelopes sealed to Toronto in my luggage and they would break because mm -hmm. they're plastic, you know, they're wax and they could maybe get damaged. So we got there and we're trying to, you know, light, a, light this candle and melt the wax. 
but we realize we have a smoke detector in the in the room and you're not allowed <laughs> to light anything in the room. So we said, okay, well, we'll go outside. Well, it was windy and there was no way the candle was stayed lit. So we went to the hotel and says, is there anywhere we can go to do this? So they took us into the kitchen and they had a nice clean table and we sat in the kitchen sealing the envelopes. Well, that was and nice of the hotel. It was very nice of the hotel, but we basically sat down from then on and said, they get sealed at home. We're not going through this, this, this <laughs> agony again. And I found a nice little container that when they went in, I tissue papered them all up. They go in the luggage, carry on luggage, or I've mailed them in a small box and they go, no problem. So uh, we have had, we did have a case where Rob Sawyer, who won one of the trophies at his table, had taken um, the, the, the buns on the table. And when we had the sharp metal ones stuck, the buns <laughs> on top, so they wouldn't hurt anybody. So let's give a shout out to the rest, because right now it sounds like you're it. So let's give a shout out to the rest of the Aurora Award committee members. Well, we start off, our president of the society or chair of the society is Murray Moore. And Murray has been our chair for a number of years now. He's doing a great job. Um, and uh, we have Clint Budd, who is head of the Hall of Fame um, committee. And he is past chair, which I am too, actually. I mean, the three of us have been chair of the society over the last couple decades. Um, we have um, Shannon Allen who is in charge of our voters package and working on the publicity team. Danielle Stevens, who is out of um, Gibson's and well, uh, the Sunshine Coast where Clint is. And she's also in our publicity department and which is a huge area that we're trying to expand. We have um, Jean-Louis Trudel, who is in Quebec and he is uh, our Boreal liaison, but he's also uh, been around the Auroras for many, many years. Um, our newest member is Mickey Mickelson, and Mickey is a, uh, a more of a publicist, and he's getting uh, interviews and things like that. I'll be doing an a audio uh, blog next week. And um, we have uh, Jeanette Dover, who is our treasurer, very important lady. And uh, she's been with the committee a number of years. And our newest addition, who's here for at least one year, maybe two, is um, Christian Sauvé out of Quebec. He is taken on our website, but he's technically not a board member, but I think the webmaster is probably one of the most important people on our in our society because he makes everything work because we are so much involved in having everything virtual. And I should mention that you guys are all volunteers. We are. None of us get paid. If uh, we are going to another conference, we actually pay our own membership to that conference and our airfare and hotel, everything. The only thing that money comes out of the society is to pay for the awards for the website, any advertising we do, all the money gets left in the society. Okay, and we should have um, websites, any social media, I wanna plug all of that. Um, the website where you can get everything is pre-Aurora Awards, and there's no extra A in the middle. Um, yeah, make sure com. it's P-R-I-X, Aurora Awards, just. Yes, so that, .ca actually. .ca, yeah. .ca. So and, pre as uh, in French, not pre as in before. Is why I was yes, thinking. exactly. Originally, the awards were both English and Francophone. So what has happened over the last about eight or nine years ago, the Francophone side of the awards was shifted over to the Boreal Congress Convention in Quebec, 
and they run the French language awards. And they've been doing that. Actually, I think Christian Sauvé actually has managed that for them for many years. And uh, so we still kept the pre at the beginning to differentiate us from other Aurora Awards, because I know there's one, I think, in Colorado. But um, if you go to our website, there's a lot of information. The full Aurora Awards ballot is there. And yeah, we'll uh, have a link uh, on the show notes of this when it goes up. Perfect. And any social needs or just the... Website? We are on Facebook and we have a Twitter feed, though I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know email them to me and I'll put them on, on, on the show notes. I will, I will arrange to get you that. Okay. But, um, yes, we're trying to make ourselves more and more visible. We're always looking for more people to join. Um, and we're always looking for more people to help. Um, if we're, you know, we're always looking for people to help with the website, with, um, social media, um, publications If people have ideas or they say, Oh, this place should get our information. We're always looking for help. Okay. Well, we want to thank Cliff. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. Talking to us. I guess you didn't actually come here, but you know what I mean. Well, I am in Calgary. <laughs> yeah, but you came here virtually. Yeah. And um, if you want to know any more, like I said, visit their website. We'll have all the info on the show notes. Thanks again, Cliff. Thank you. And that's it. The interview's over. Okay. Thank you.